I want to go deeper. I want to get to the heart of the matter and what it is you need to know to really understand permaculture design and how it's taught and the tools and foundation of the system and even more important, the mindset that you have to adopt to understand it. That what we're doing is we're looking around us and seeing the problems in the world and then we're learning to listen and look at the natural system and observe and learn from nature itself. Then we want to design solutions from what we've observed. Doesn't it make sense? The universe has been around a very, very long time and it knows how to look after itself. So if we design solutions that align, then we stand a chance of not just repairing the problems that are all around us, but actually creating an abundance. I work on aid projects and I work with people who are suffering and it's a serious business. So I need to be able to teach what I know works and what actually gets a result. It's not hard, but it can be complicated. It's interesting in its complications. It's like a very interesting game combination. You're always trying to find new combinations that work well together and you're always finding them. It's always revealing more and more interesting, in-depth situations. And nobody, nobody has ever said to me, it's too complicated after they've engaged. They've all said how incredibly interesting it is. It's what we actually engage in. It's what we naturally feel comfortable being involved with. And you actually realize it's infinite. It goes on indefinitely. It keeps going. There's no ceiling to this. There's no end to this. It kind of makes you feel comfortable with time. It makes you feel comfortable with infinity, actually. It makes you realize the system is, as its name implies, absolutely permanent. Permaculture makes connections between disciplines. So it's definitely a system that's quite complex. But what we do is we provide you with a framework. A framework of approach that gives you section by section of understanding. It builds a picture. How you design them, the systems that you use, the approaches that you adapt, how the patterns of the universe everywhere around us, the patterns of reality, why they are formed in certain ways is you know, it explains how that is a formula in itself, how energy is held in certain forms and why those forms keep repeating. There are constants about the climate on this planet. There are very constant factors. And once we understand that and the difference between climates in different places, we kind of get a stronger, tighter, clearer focus on what it is we're doing and where we should be applying one sort of design to another. The trees are the major elements of ecosystems. They receive the energy of the climate. From there it goes on to water because the big beneficial element in the landscape from climate and trees and their energy interactions is the water cycle and that's such an important cycle. We go onto soil because from there with so much life, it's all about the life in the soil and creating soil. And that's a big subject in itself. But once you've got fertile soil, once you're not losing soil, you're gaining soil and improving soil's fertility, you're definitely starting to be on the winning team. So from there, we go from soils to how we move it around because we've always moved soil around a bit. We've made ponds, we've held up water, we've made roads, we've made earth, we've, we've shaped the soil. We've been terraformers forever. From there, we can go specific to climates. The three major climates of the world, the humid tropics, they're so different. They're the hot, high sun, tropics where you get high temperatures and high humidity then on to dry lands they're where the evaporation is so high it's higher than the rainfall and they're specific and they're quite complicated and then we can go on to the other humid climate which is the cool to cold so we have the three major climates the last one there before the final is aquaculture 
how we actually get production in water itself. And then at the very end, the 14th chapter of them all, strategies for a global alternative nation. How we have to use ethics as processes and protocols to govern our needs. How we have to use ethics to govern design science. How we design our communities, how we interact, how we have our local trading, how we set up bioregional currencies, how we trade together, and how we set up permanent cooperation and an abundant world that we truly deserve. That's our framework, that's what we can do. That's why people realize that permaculture is a design system for the future and one we need right now to get past the issues we have.